So um, this is the last lecture of, of 564. Um, this one, we're going to talk about the Monte Carlo technique. So we've been talking about radiation problems. And, uh, you know, I guess if you've been sort of uh, following along, we've been sort of building up to this, uh, what's sometimes called the radiosity method, where you have these, um, you know, surface resistances and surface-to-surface -surface resistances that interact. And uh, this technique is limited in some ways. Uh, certainly, we can only deal with uh, diffuse surfaces, and uh, you know, we could also only deal with surfaces that are gray or semi-gray, right? So we can deal with wavelength dependence, but we have to do it by splitting up the issue, the problem, into little wavelength bands. So those are limitations associated with this uh, technique. If you want to do uh, radiation heat transfer that isn't limited in this way, you have to go towards the Monte Carlo technique. And we'll talk about the Monte Carlo technique kind of generally, and then we'll actually apply it um, specifically to looking at view factors, which is something that's pretty, pretty straightforward and, and gives you another tool for finding view factors for situations where maybe um, it's not you know, it's not easy to go look one up. So the idea behind the Monte Carlo technique is um, this is a sto stochastic technique. So the radiosity methods that we've been talking about are deterministic, uh, by which I mean, you know, they're almost, they're algebraic. They uh, give you one answer uh, at the end of, of all of your calculations. Monte Carlo techniques are very different. They're actually uh, random, and as a result, Every time you run a Monte Carlo simulation, you're going to get a slightly different answer, right? And we'll see that when we when we actually set one up. So the idea behind the Monte Carlo technique is to send out many, many rays uh, and to do this uh, randomly and keep track of what happens to them. And randomly um, is not totally accurate. You will use probability distributions to make... Um, decisions about what happens to these rays and these probability distributions will be based on the characteristics of the surfaces you're trying to simulate and so that's where it becomes really flexible to uh, consider various things about the surfaces because you can sort of build them into the probability distributions that you're using to simulate the surfaces and so the idea behind um, doing this is that uh, you, you, you shoot off rays um, one after another, or if you have a parallel processor, or you would do it all, all in parallel. Um, but then for each ray, uh, what you're going to do is, first of all, uh, select a location on the surface randomly from where you want to shoot the ray off. Um, you will select a direction, uh, again, randomly, uh, that you want to shoot the ray in. and. Uh, Right here you can see that you can deal with non-diffuse surfaces pretty easily uh, in this step. So our direction is uh, selected based on these two angles, right, phi, phi, and theta. You know, we talked about the situation where for most surfaces, for many surfaces, emissivity might be a function of theta. It's not going to be a very strong function of phi. So if that's the case, then... Uh, you know, maybe you would randomly distribute uh, your your phi angle from 0 to 2 pi uniformly. You would give no angle a preference over another angle. But maybe you wouldn't be uniformly distributing your, your theta angle, right? Because, um, you know, maybe you want to have a, a higher likelihood per unit area of a ray hitting the top of your hemisphere than down here towards the, you know, towards the surface of the towards the where the hemisphere intersects the surface right that would be consistent with having a high emissivity normal and a lower emissivity as you move towards theta equals 90 degrees and that's something that you could deal with uh, in this kind of a simulation that you just can't deal with uh, using the radiosity method uh, then you select the wavelength uh, that the ray has which which also tells you what the energy of the ray is and here's where it's very easy now to simulate non-gray surfaces Right, we can select uh, wavelengths that um, are not consistent necessarily with a black surface, and maybe there's a, a higher preference towards low wavelengths if a surface has a, a low emissivity 
you know, it has, has higher emissivity at low wavelength bands and so on. So, you know, based on how you can uh, select your probability distribution for this step would allow you to deal with, you know, any kind of, uh, of, of uh, emissivity as a function of wavelength, right? So it's very flexible from that regard. So once you've selected all those things, right, we have a location, we have a direction, and we have a wavelength for our array, then you keep track of what happens to it as it goes through space, right? So now we're going to watch it go through space and see what, if any, surface it hits. And then when it hits the surface, then we have to decide, well, is this ray going to be absorbed by the surface or is it reflected by the surface? And, you know, now all of a sudden, uh, we can make that decision based on the characteristics of the surface, right? So this surface over here will have some absorptivity that itself could be a function of direction and wavelength, right? So based on what direction the ray hits it and what the wavelength of the ray is, the surface uh, will have a different probability distribution about what's going on, right? So you can see uh, it's a very simple idea that we would use uh, to do these kinds of calculations, but you need many, many, many rays, and you need to put some thought into the probability distributions that you're using to keep track of what happens. Uh, very powerful technique. Um, we're not going to uh, do a complete radiation simulation in this class using Monte Carlo method. Uh, it's, a, it's a method that's, like I said, extremely powerful, and there's entire classes dedicated towards uh, having you do Monte Carlo techniques, not just for radiation, but it's powerful for almost you know any aspect of engineering. Uh, in this class, we're going to restrict ourselves to uh, using the Monte Carlo technique to find just a view factor, right? And that's, um, I think, sort of the last tool in your toolbox for radiation that will allow you to simulate and tackle uh, problems that are pretty complicated, right? When you couple this... <laughs> Monte Carlo technique for finding view factors with your ability now to do semi-gray radiation surface exchange, um, you can you know get pretty far on, on most problems that you would meet. So for view factors, the process becomes a lot simpler, right? We're going to shoot off uh, many rays. So if I want to find the, the view factor F12, so going from surface 1 to surface 2, then I'm going to shoot off many, many rays from surface 1 and just count how many times I hit surface 2. Right? That's the basic idea. So we're going to repeat n times, where n needs to be a big number. Uh, the process of selecting a location on surface 1 randomly, uh, and then selecting a direction randomly, and then just keeping track if the ray from surface 1 hits surface 2. And when I'm all done doing this n times, F12 is just the number of times that I hit surface 2 divided by n, the number of rays. And again, uh, you're going to get a different answer every time you run the program, right? Because it's uh, there's randomness involved in it. But if you make n large enough, you'll see that the variation is pretty small, right? And and you'll result your result will converge on the actual view factor. And this is a little bit like a numerical technique where it's an approximate solution. But if you have enough you know, nodes or, or enough time steps, you're uh, you're closing in on the actual solution. And so one of the one of the things you have to do as an engineer is decide whether n is large enough, right? Am I shooting off enough rays that I'm actually close enough, and close enough is a judgment call, right? Am I close enough to the actual view factor that I'm, that I'm happy, to, happy to continue? All right, so that's the basic idea. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's do this for <laughs> a, a geometry. Uh, that's simple enough that we can check our answer against a deterministic answer. So here's a, uh, <coughs> a geometry that consists of two uh, rectangular planes. So plane one, surface one, is sitting down here in the x y uh, in the x y plane, and its dimension is a by c. And then plane two, surface two, is sitting here in the x z plane, right? And it's um, offset. Uh, by a distance b1, and this dimension is uh, c by b2, right? So that's the idea, and I want to know what f12 is. Um, and so we'll go through these steps that we talked about. So as we go through these steps, um, we're going to build up a, a computer program that calculates the uh, view factor. Uh, I'm going to do this in MATLAB because it's... Um, the easiest way to do this in a way that lets you sort of port this over to whatever language you're comfortable with. So here's my function in MATLAB. 
it takes in um, these last four arguments are the geometry that we talked about, right? A, B1, B2, and C. If you go back and look, oh, let's just look. That's A, B1, B2, and C. That's enough to completely specify the geometry. And it also takes in this other thing, N, which is the number of rays uh, that you want to use to run the program, right? So inside of here, um, I have to do uh, one logical structure, which is I need to, to shoot off um, n rays, right? And while I'm doing that, every time I get done shooting off a ray, I need to have a counter that counts up depending on whether or not that ray hit uh, the other surface or not. So that's what this does, right? This counter is the number of rays, and this counter is the number of hits, right? So while the number of rays that I've shot off is less than the number of rays that I want to shoot off, I'm going to keep shooting off rays, right? So um, here uh, I'm going to increment my ray counter because every time I go through this loop, I am going to shoot off an array. And then here I'm going to do step one, right? So step one is, um, let's go back and look at this. Step one is select the location on surface one uh, from which to shoot off the ray. And we do this randomly, right? So down here, it looks to me like I got to pick an X and a Y location, X naught and Y naught on this surface, and that's going to be the origin of my ray, right? And this surface is so simple that this is really easy, right? I'm going to um, choose a number between 0 and C, and all numbers, all X locations have an equal probability of being selected. That's going to be X naught. I'm going to choose another number between... Um, between zero and A, and that'll be uh, my Y number, right? And in this case, um, that's very easy, right? And so the way that I do this in um, in MATLAB is I use this function called RAND, RAND. And what RAND does is it just generates a, a number between zero and one randomly. And every number has a uniform uh, probability of being selected, right? So the, the, it's a uniform probability distribution. Uh, and that will work for this. So my x naught is rand times c. So this is going to generate for me a number between 0 and 1 and multiply it by c. And y naught is rand times a. So again, uh, y naught is going to be any number between 0 and a uh, with equal probability. You have to be a little careful when you have uh, surfaces that are not um, square like this, right? So you know, maybe you have a round surface, and it's very tempting to say, well, I'm going to generate uh, a radius from which to shoot off my ray and that radius is going to have an equal probability between zero and the radius of my surface and an angle right and that angle will be between zero and two pi and if you do that you're going to get the wrong answer and the reason is because um, what you've just done is not assigned to every area of this surface an equal probability of being selected right by by uniformly ch by, by choosing a radius between zero and the radius of the surface with all radii having an equal probability of being selected, what you've basically done is shoot off a lot more rays towards the center per unit area than you are out here at the edge, right? So you've got to be careful not to do that. You've got to keep in your mind that when you're selecting uh, an initial location from which to shoot the ray off, every area of your surface has to have an equal probability of being selected, right? You can't somehow... Uh, uh, accidentally concentrate rays in some locations versus other locations. All right, so that's not what we're doing here. We're being careful that every area here has an equal probability of being selected.